In our Capital 10X interview series, we've continued to highlight the global push for low carbon emissions that's brought battery metals, critical metals, and rare earths into the spotlight. Lithium was one of the major metals to gain investor attention in recent years. The ramp up in manufacturing and increasing demand for electric vehicles, coupled with a rise in the lithium spot price, has well positioned explorers and miners to take advantage of the urgent need for resources for the energy transition. One such explorer is Stria Lithium, and we're pleased to have the CEO, Dean Hanish, here to share some insights and shed some colors on recent developments with this company. Could you start by giving us a brief overview of your resources and why you chose Northern Quebec and the James Bay area in particular? Well, I actually didn't choose the property, but I was fortunate enough to inherit that property that was picked up in 2013. And you can imagine back in 2013, nobody was really looking for lithium. It wasn't that popular. Uh, the prices weren't where they were today. So they really had their pick of the litter and they went across... Uh, Quebec specifically uh, to see like where the best property could be. And, you know, James Bay, obviously that area uh, with hydroelectricity, they chose a property that had electricity adjacent, uh, close to the road, the main highway. So it's 20 kilometers from the main road. So that basically if we have any opportunity to find something, they would definitely uh, have a lot lower capital expenditure than if you're farther away not to mention the ease of actually being able to work on the project as far as lodging and, and just having the infrastructure there. So we're very fortunate, excited. I mean, the property was picked up. It's like picking up a uh, beachfront 200 years ago in Florida. I mean, we just got very lucky. There was a massive pegmatite. And as we know, like, you know, generally you find spodumene in these massive pegmatites. So, you know, I think it was pretty, a pretty easy pick when you go there and see this 120 meter wide pegmatite and you can see photos on uh, on our website but I think that's that's the main reason they chose that property for those three reasons and of course Quebec is a very favorable jurisdiction to be mining can you tell us about the major transaction you structured with Cygnus Gold it looks like a smart way to fund exploration basically what happened was that we were sitting at a three million market cap we had rolled back the stock and so we really were tightening things up and we wanted to go out and do a 10,000 meter drill program. But in order to do a 10,000 meter drill program, it, it takes about $4 million um, and do some surveys and what have you. And for us to do that, we kind of said, well, we're gonna dilute again, our shareholders quite a bit if we do that at 3 million market cap. So we went out and we were speaking to different people and we were very fortunate to come across an Australian group with a great track record and we're able to make a deal that we have $3 million coming in to help finance the company. And at the same time, we're getting $4 million worth of drilling, which is what we wanted to achieve. And all of that would have only diluted us, you know, 51% of the project rather than $7 million at the $3 million market cap. So it was a pretty, it was a pretty easy deal. And then the second tranche is another $3 million in cash as a financing and another $6 million in actual work commitments. So for us, the deal was a great deal. And I think uh, with a very uh, tight market share structure that we have, so we're 25 million undiluted, I think it was a, it was a smart move of going forward, not to mention getting the specialty skill sets that the Australians have in spodumin pegmatites. So I think we got a great group with an amazing track record. Like, to be honest, I, I always call them the New England Patriots of Australia. Um, they've been successful with Bellevue Gold, Arteco. They've brought them to billion dollar market caps. So I really feel fortunate that we picked the right group. Do you have an idea what Cygnus's long-term goal for Pontax is? Say 2023 drilling proves out a significant lithium resource. Would Cygnus prefer to sell its stake to a bigger player or will management prefer to develop the resource in-house? I'm not sure if people are aware. This group is highly successful group. Uh, Ray Chirox, Michael Naylor, I mean, they've done Bellevue Gold. So if I use Bellevue Gold as an example, they started off with exploration and they created, you know, a 10-year mine life for a mine and they're in kind of building it out now. So I would say that most likely, you know, they'll go the next step to at least get some type of processing on site to get the carbonate. And then probably, you know, logically, you're going to bring it to somebody else within the region that is making, uh, you know, high grade lithium. 
Stria recently received a significant grant from the Quebec government to explore for lithium. How committed is the government to supporting exploration for critical minerals? And do you think there's an opportunity to win additional grants in the future? So I think, I mean, this is one of the cases where, as far as the grant is concerned, I think that the, the government, both the Quebec government, and the Canadian government are extremely forward thinking and proactive in supporting different critical mineral companies in general. Uh, and I think that when government helps to fund and give grants and loans to the private sector in this manner, I think definitely a lot of companies are going to benefit and will be highly successful. So, yeah, I would say that I think a lot of companies uh, like ourselves and others, especially as you get closer to a feasibility or going into production, I think that you can see already they've already been doling out money to those companies uh, and getting them to the next stage. So, yeah, I mean, I think they're very committed and I think we're very fortunate to be in Canada right now where we have just about every mineral that's needed within the EV battery space. And that kind of makes us a little bit more unique. And I think that's why the government is, is doing it. And you, you're seeing that now where you know, they're definitely supporting this whole initiative. You had a busy drilling schedule in 2022, but plan to ramp up significantly this year. Could you help investors identify the drilling catalyst they should be looking for in 2023 from Stria? So 2023 is going to be an exciting year. And the reason why is that we have potentially three drill rigs that will be brought into the project. Um, so I'm not sure if people are aware, but up there in that area, you have some overlay of moss and what have you, at least about 18 inches. So during the winter time, it's actually a benefit because everything freezes over and then you're able to like drive in the rigs. So we were doing some helicopter drilling, but now we've almost completed uh, the winter road and that winter road will allow us to bring in hopefully a total of three drill rigs. So they'll be working nonstop uh, and definitely assays will be coming out over the next six months. So that's a pretty aggressive drill program Cygnus has implemented. And I think that they'll, you know, they should get anywhere from 12, 13, 14 million, uh, or 12 to 14 meters of drilling completed within that time frame, which is phenomenal. What's the most likely timeline for exploring and expanding the resource in the northern and southwestern regions of Pontax North and Pontax Central? I think that that's going to happen within this drill program. So some of these uh, drill holes will be put into the actual main central area itself and at depth and there's some resource definition drilling in there because Cygnus has uh, mentioned that they would like to try and put a resource together so they are going to be drilling in those spaces um, but at the same time they will be drilling those two extensions as well as uh, some northern parallel structure that was defined on the lidar and I mean this property has pegmatites all over the property. So I think, you know, you'll also see some reconnaissance drilling as well outside of that to see where the structure continues because technically it has a 10 kilometer long strike. Dean, this has been an enlightening interview, but before we go, I wanted to ask you, what do you think of the future of the battery metal supply chain and what it looks like in Quebec and Canada more broadly? Could Quebec become a major metal supplier to the global electric vehicle and battery storage supply chain? Well, I think Quebec is probably one of the best suited places to do this. And the reason why is that they have every critical mineral. So that's kind of what makes Quebec very unique is that all of the critical minerals needed for an electric vehicle are in Quebec. I think the government is completely on board to proactively support Quebec and the critical mineral companies. And you can see even, you know, the Canadian government making deals with uh, different battery manufacturing companies and processing companies in Bécancour, in Kingston. So yeah, I think with uh, the price advantage that Quebec holds from their hydroelectricity, I think it's a logical place where you're going to see that Quebec will be a leader. Excellent. Thanks again, Dean.